Amazon recently released the 2023 version of the Linux AMIs. It's called Amazon Linux 2023 AMIs. So in this video, we are going to do a walkthrough of what new changes the AMI brings. So this includes deterministic updates, uh, changes to IMDS version 2, changes to SA Linux enforcing and kernel i patching so we are going to look into all of those features in this video so let's get started first let's create an instance i'm going to name my instance amazon linux 2023 uh, because I have to show a demonstration of deterministic update I have to choose an older AMI so if I go here select community AMIs and search for AL 2023 followed by AMI and then 2023 again so this will give me a list of all the AMIs I'm particularly interested in the x86 64-bit architecture and due to the nature of deterministic updates I'll have to choose the oldest AMI uh, that was released on March 15th. Uh, why am I doing this because with the new update all of the reports tree versions are attached to the AMI versions so when I choose this AMI version it will also come with a repository that is versioned almost the same uh, repository version starts from here to here and this will have a list of packages that we cannot update so we are on March 15th AMI it has repository version of March 15 if I want any package updates then I'll have to point to the repository version that is either 019 329 or whatever is bigger than this so whenever you are choosing a AMI you'll have a repository version that's a rule of thumb so when you come and create a new instance with the new AMI 2023 uh, if you create a fleet of EC2 instances all of your instances will have the same package version because of the repository version that is pinned so that is one of the good features if you are trying to use EC2 instance in a fleet so I'm going to choose the one with March 15 I've selected that um, free tier eligible I have a key called admin AWS one. If you don't have a key, you can go ahead and select create a new key pair. Uh, I'm going to keep everything as default and then I'm going to create my instance. So click on launch instance. This is going to take a minute or two and we'll come back when the instance is ready. Now I'm in my terminal of the EC2 instance. So if I check the repository version first, if you remember, we chose the AMI that was released on March 15. So this is also going to have a repository pinned on March 15. So all the updates, all the packages that are available on this pinned repository will not be available on the next version or the prior version. So this is a unique repository that contains unique packages and unique versions. So this is something very important to remember. The first thing we are going to discuss is deterministic updates. Uh, I think this is the biggest change and this is something uh, everyone would struggle if you are not aware like what this is and you're trying to update any packages or update the whole system. This is where you might be stuck. So let's get started with it. The first thing that changes with the package manager is instead of yum you have dnf but you have a symbolic link to dnf if you use the command yum so yum command is still there but it has a symbolic link uh if i run this command then yeah we can see that yum has a symbolic link to dnf3 now to see a list of packages that are available on this pinned version of the repository uh you can do this and it will give me a list of all the packages for now in this demo i'm going to choose a package called runcy so this is a low level uh, container tool as you can see it has a version of 1.1.3 right now so one way to check package uh, information is dnf info runcy so this is going to give you a neat list of what is the version of the package available uh, repository and all the other informations but as a run C user, I know that the version 1.1.3 is a pretty old version of run C and there is a new version available, particularly for my workflow. I'm interested in version 1.1.4. And if I see the tag section of run C on the GitHub repository, it has 1.1.4. But if I try to search for it, it just shows me 1.1.3. So that means the repository that was released on March 15 just comes with the run C version 1.1.3. I cannot update this to 1.1.4. But I can check if the latest release servers of the repository has an updated version of run C. So how do I do that? It's pretty simple. DNF info, run C, and this is a very important flag to remember. So write release 
ver so meaning release version equals to latest so this is always going to point at the latest package repository but this might be something you don't always want as you saw there are like multiple versions of the repository but for the easiness of this tutorial i'm just going to point at the latest version so if i point there you can see that there is this version 1.1.4 that i'm interested in so now if i want a tool that is version 1.1.4 i have to query a latest repository not the repository that my ami comes with so how do i do that i can just do dnf install run c and release version equals to latest and okay i need to add sudo so i'll just add sudo on front i'm going to do yes and if i do dnf info run c and it's going to show me the package version as 1.1.4 and this is installed so this was just one package and we pointed to the posty version that was latest let's go and try to find packages on a pinned version of a certain repository for that i'm going to choose a package called container d which is again a low level uh, container tool so if i search dnf info and container d i can see that it has a version 1.6.8 but again there is a latest version to it and now we need to point to a different repository version and this is important because for each packages that you want to update you can go to a latest repository version or whichever repository that houses a latest update and you can get the update for that binary that tool only you don't have to do the whole upgrade so this is the level of control that deterministic updates provides you on the amazon linux 2023 yeah 1.6.8 but if i go to the release notes of the amazon linux 2023 and if i go to like we are on 315 right and there is no mention of container d but if i go to 329 then there is a new version of container d added to that repository so i'm interested in that one now how do i find the repository version right i can see that it's 2023 329 but it needs a certain key to actually work so for that i'm actually going to go back to the ec2 console go to instances and go to amis and here if i search for al 2023 whatever we searched during the creation of the instance we can find it here and basically uh, the ami version contains the repository version like i showed you so it starts from the date 2023 and it ends up to here not dot zero kernel whatever right it's dot zero dot one you don't have to care about it the one that i'm particularly interested in is march 29 so i'm going to copy from 2023 zero to here i'm going to omit uh, dot zero and everything else i'm just going to copy it and if I go to my terminal and run DNF info container D followed by release ver equals to the repository version. So it's going to look into that repository and we are going to find a new version of container 3 that is 1.6.19. We already saw installing packages from the different repository or the latest repository, right? Uh, but for this demo, I'm going to install the old version of container D and then I'm going to show how we can upgrade from 1.6.8 to 1.6.19 when the package is already installed. So for that, I'm going to run sudo dnf install container D. Yes. It's installed. So if I do dnf info container D, then yeah, I'm on 1.6.8. Now let's upgrade this. To upgrade this package the command is pretty straightforward dnf upgrade i might have to add sudo here just in case and again uh, container d right the package i'm interested in and release version is going to be um, the one that was released on march 29th so if i do this i'm fetching i'm looking at the packages on this in repository i'm going to press y and this is going to install the latest version of container d uh, from the package repository that is pinned on march 29th now if i do dnf info container d now i'm on 1.6.19 so that is a deterministic update in general for the amazon linux 2023 but there are also other neat things you can do with this so on the latest version of the repository there are not just packages with new versions right there are new packages added all the time and there are security updates along with it so if i want to see what are the latest security updates that are available on the latest pin repository i can run the following command and i can just get the security updates only 
as you can see like all of these packages have security updates it's also going to list the obsolete packages and if there are new packages added to the latest version of the repository i can just pass new packages instead of security and this is going to list all the new packages but sadly there are no new packages there if you want to see what are the overall updates are on the latest uh, repository version you can run the following command again check update release version is the key here this is the source right so these are all the packages uh, that we can update from this repository version when we go to the latest one and instead of check update you can also pass dnf upgrade so i'm going to put back the old command and i'm going to write upgrade and super user okay and this is going to give a neat look at all the packages that are available even the kernel ones right so yeah this is something that is pretty neat with deterministic updates and uh, one thing i'm not sure like if this is useful but you can also check uh, the latest release uh, server and check the change logs there so if you pass this command check update release version again latest and change logs this is going to give a change log of what has changed on the packages and what cve changes are there right so this is going to give you a neat list of all the things uh, that has been updated and apart from this you can also go to the uh, release notes section of the amazon linux 2023 and you can browse by the release dates and you can get all of these neat information about what were added what were updated and everything so yeah this resource i'll pin it on the description below now deterministic update is all fine and good right but this can come in your way of doing things so you just want the latest version of all the tools you're just you just want that in your workflow so if you want that you can also disable uh, the deterministic updates so for that uh, there is a variable that the dnf reads which is called release ver again so if you do this so we are passing uh, latest text as the variable for release ver key so if we do this then the release version will always point to the latest server so that we always get the latest updates and this is it you'll get the deterministic updates out of your way and you can run it like a normal amazon linux 2 perhaps in terms of updates and how you want to consume the updates so on the next section we are going to look at ASCII linux so in this demo we are going to see the ASCII linux state on amazon linux 2023 which is on the left and amazon linux 2 on the right so on the amazon linux 2 if i do se status uh, which keeps the status of ASCII linux on the system it's disabled by default but on the amazon linux 2023 if i do se status this is set to permissive by default and it is enabled as well so this is another security benefit of amazon linux 2023 let's say there is some unwanted access or someone is trying to do an unauthorized access on the system as linux will keep all the logs of those and you can easily view it so if i run this command we can see there is an audit log which shows that okay there was an access denied for a system resource and all of these other information but if you run the same command on amazon linux 2 there is nothing so this is another security benefit of this as linux is available on both of these amis but the thing is it's disabled on amazon linux 2 and it is enabled by default on amazon linux 2023 and security by default is always a great feature to have so another great security feature that comes with amazon linux 2023 is the imds v2 so imds stands for instance metadata service and it is an endpoint where the ec2 instance calls to get all the information about itself so it can get information about which availability zone it is in what ip address it has and all of those other things and this one is pretty important because uh on the amazon linux 2 it only had imds version 1 and it was pretty vulnerable to server side request forgery and even aws was a victim of it and this is another security by default feature so there is this internal ip address for instance metadata service and if we query that in on the amazon linux 2023 it gives us unauthorized it is protected but if i go to amazon linux 2 and hit the same url I'm going to get a plethora of options to get details about instance. So let's focus on IMDS version 1 before we move on to the IMDS version 2. And on the same command, if I pass, uh, let's say AMI ID, 
then i'm going to get the ami id and i'm going to get all of these other information about the instance as well but the riskiest part here is the temporary credentials that you can generate that allows ec2 to access other resources on the aws so if i update the previous url uh, metadata identity credentials ec2 security credentials for the ec2 instance i'm going to get temporary credentials that allows access to all the aws resources so this is pretty risky right and if you go and look into server side request forgery if your server is not maintained properly hackers can get access to these tokens and they can access your private resources but on the other hand if we move to the amazon linux 2023 if we pass the same command then again it needs authentication so this is security by default if you want to go a step further and want to see all the um, instance metadata details then you need to generate token first to do that i'm going to run the following command i'm I'm creating a variable called token and on that I'm going to put a temporary token which has a time to live of 21,600 seconds. So after that the token is invalid and the temporary credentials that this token is used to generate will also be invalidated. So this is another layer of security on IMDS v2. So now I have that token on my token variable. I can now go ahead and use that token on my request header. The name of the header is called AWS EC2 metadata token. I pass that token that was generated earlier. And if I hit enter, then it gives me all the list of endpoints that was available by default on Amazon Linux 2. So let me go back to the end. And if I do AMI ID, now I can get the AMI ID. And now if I want to generate the temporary credentials, I can do so. So IMDS version 2 is enabled by default. And this is a great security feature to have. It's not that you cannot enable IMDS version 2 on Amazon Linux 2. You can do so. Uh, there are many tutorials on the internet to do so. So if you are running on Amazon Linux 2, go ahead and enable IMDS v2. Um, another feature of Amazon Linux 2023 is the updated version of OpenSSL. So if I do OpenSSL version, uh, it is on version 3 and on Amazon Linux 2. If I do OpenSSL version, it is on version 1. So version 3 by default has a lot of performance improvements, a lot of security improvements on the ciphers and encryptions um, it provides. So it's great to have latest version of OpenSSL in terms of security perspective. So another great feature of Amazon Linux 2023 is kernel live patching. So with kernel live patching, you don't need to restart your system whenever there is a patch patch for the kernel uh, that will improve the security of the system. These patches will mostly be CVEs and if there are any live patches on the updates it will be available here. So the live patches will have the alias of ALAS live patch. If I search for this there are no live patches for Amazon Linux 2023 but if I search the same on the Amazon Linux 2 as you can see there are plenty of security patches available. So yeah, basically on Amazon Linux 2023, if you want to apply these security patches, you don't have to restart your system. That means there is no downtime and this gives much more confidence when you're running on Amazon Linux 2023. That's it for this video. I hope this video provided some clarity on the new changes with Amazon Linux 2023 and I hope this gets you up and running. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have any queries or suggestions, you can comment down below and if you want to see similar videos in the future, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.